Hey all you groovy cats, welcome back to Dirk's Numa Files and another groovy video. What you're looking at here are the bits and pieces for The Mummy from the TV series The Groovy Ghoulies, which was in the 70s. Um, another one of the cool characters from the show. Um, I've got the five pieces here that make him up. Um, I don't have the base. I'm not sure if I'm going to make the base because I'm trying to collect these guys and put them all together uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to put them on one base or have them individual so I didn't waste the resin yet on the base uh, I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that yet but anyway I digress this is the mummy he was one of the characters in the groovy ghoulies he was um, he was voiced by uh, veteran actor Howard Morris um, he was very prolific ar actor in the golden age of television. He has hundreds and hundreds of credits to his name. Uh, things that he did mostly, mostly he was a voice actor in a lot, a lot of cartoons. You probably didn't even, you probably watched him and you didn't even realize it. But probably his biggest claim to fame, at least that I recognize, was probably his role as Ernest T. Bass in the Andy Griffith show. You know who's back in town, don't you? Ernest T. Bass, you come in here. How do you do to you and you? It's me, it's me, it's Ernest T. <laughs> Ernest T., how many times I have to tell you, you can't go around breaking windows, it's against the law. Not... Are you serious about this education business? Of course I am. I wouldn't fun about a thing like that. Andy, what are you thinking about? I guess anything's possible. Chef, I order, already know the whole front part of the alphabet. A, B, C, F, L, G. I know a lot of other letters, but not in a row like that. Um, <laughs> really funny character. Uh, but anyway, um, this character is, like I said, in five pieces. It builds up to, and will be about seven and a half inches when done. Um, so that's pretty cool. You can see here his face. Let me get in a little bit more. <laughs> Don't you know? Yeah, he's pretty cool. Anyway, these are just some simple builds, um, but they're a lot of fun. A lot of, um, a lot of memories for me as a kid growing up. Um, here's his body. You can see a little bit of resin there. I'm not going to get rid of that. What it was is when I cured this, I assembled him. Instead of having all the pieces laying down, I assembled him and put him on my curing station where he went round and round and cured in the light. And the light was able to get all angles as opposed to me having to flip at the end of a cycle and do two cycles. And I guess some resin dripped out from in here and it cured as it was going around. Oh, no big deal. It'll be fine. Nobody will ever see it once he's assembled. But that's what that's from. So I don't want to get rid of that. I'm just going to leave that there. But yeah, he's a pretty cool figure. So we're going to start putting him together, or we're going to start cleaning him up first, and we're going to put him together, and we're going to go from there. Should be a real simple build. You know, what, three, four colors? You know, um, his eyes are one color, um, the bandages are a color, and then, well, two colors for his eyes. His eyeballs themselves, and then the eye surface right in here is a color, and then, you know, so probably about three or four colors for him so I hope you'll stay tuned and uh, we'll be right back it went together real simple I mean like it was just five pieces and he was together you know the torso each of the arms and his legs and then his head um, glued him together using some super glue gel um, put him together and then I went to paint him I kind of made a mistake with the paint you know as we say 
do as I say, not as I do here on the Dirk channel, right? Um, what I used for his color, because I just thought I'd get it like one and done, you know, uh, trying to skimp and save as I went and I used this Dupla Color Perfect Match Wimbledon White. Now, the color is fantastic, I thought. It would make good for a mummy. It's not bright scarlet white, so to speak, you know, stark white. It would give a little bit of a tint. So I figured that'd be really cool. The problem is, it's like 30 some odd degrees outside, and I sprayed it, decided when nobody was home except for me, that I would spray it in my basement, in my little impromptu uh, spray area. I don't have a spray booth, I just have an area that I use. Um, and, you know, put a fan on and let it dissipate the fumes and we all good but this stuff stinks to high heaven like you would not believe four hours later you could still smell it it was a mistake i should not have done that what i should have done is i should have used this uh apple barrel antique white it would have got the same effect and no smell but i digress so lesson of the of the day do not use this stuff in the house it stinks beyond all get out so anyway so we sprayed him up and just like that he looks pretty cool last night i was um tooling around and i just you know i wasn't really feeling into mo much modeling but i figured i'd just do some little little detail see if i could, how it looked so i detailed his eyes i used some black acrylic paint for the eyes and the mouth and then i used some chromium yellow for his eyeballs and that's what he looks now Really, I could probably just do that and say I'm done with him. But to be honest with you, I just want to add a little bit more depth to the character. I know it's a cartoon character, and there wasn't a lot in the TV show, you know, especially back in the 70s. But I think I want to add a little bit more depth to him by wherever his bandages are raised. I think I'm going to go get some either a tan or a diluted brown, and we're going to you know, just highlight the edges of the bandages and give them a little bit more pop, hopefully. Um, hopefully that'll be pretty good. He's already been, it's it's already a gloss coat with the, um, with the uh, Wimbledon white, so I think it'll clean up easily if I make a mistake, but yeah, that's my idea. I just think it'd give it a little extra pop to it, so that's where we are right now. And I'm still contemplating whether I'm going to create his base or not. I have a feeling it's going to be a while before I get them all. And, um, you know, so I might as well get his base painted up too and we'll display him with his base until I can uh, get to the point where I want to make uh, the custom one I spoke of earlier. So, anyway, that's where we are right now. So, the mummy. Oops, let me do it this way. The mummy. Okay, and we're back with the final on our mummy build from... The 70s TV series, The Groovy Ghoulies. Um, <laughs> I'm actually really kind of pleased with the way he turned out. Now, I didn't do the highlighting of the bandages like I wanted to. Um, I be honest with you, I just I I, I got lazy and I didn't do it. Um, but regardless, I still think he looks really cool. Um, and even though I didn't do the highlighting of the bandages, I did go out and print the um, the base, as you can see right here. Uh, it came out pretty well, I think. Um, it's got the groovy ghoulies embossed on the floor there. It's got a placard with his name, Mummy. Um, it's also got wood, wood grain type material in there, if you can see that. So it looks like it's a, a wood floor. Um, <clears throat> the colors we used on him were simple. We're trying to keep it simple across the spectrum of the characters. Um, we For his overall color, it's the Wimbledon White uh, from, um, from the uh, automotive spray paint. Um, suggestion, never use that in your house. Uh, really stinky. Um, but anyway, yeah, we used that on his body. But the yellows in his eyes and on the base were um, Americana uh, chromium yellow um, we did black for his eye for his eyeballs 
and his or his pupils and his eyes and his mouth they were black um, don't need to show you that it's just black paint um, the lettering on the groovy ghoulies down here again matches across with the other characters um, and that is the Americana Hauser medium green and then um, this uh, lettering was also done with the um, with the uh, Wimbledon white but then I just went through it with a, a panel wash of brown that I made to seep into the to seep into the cracks there and give it that look so that looks kind of cool I think so yeah so this is the mummy I I'm pretty pleased with it I think he looks really cool and again he matches the uh, he matches the other character there <laughs> it's been really fun doing these guys you know everything like I said has been hand painted um, I've been while I'm working on them I've been putting uh, the music I almost all their music is on YouTube so I've been putting it on in the background and listening to it and it's just been really funny stuff uh, a lot of a lot of memories coming back up next is going to be Hagatha uh, stay tuned for that but yeah so she'll be next but to just to give you a, a, a glimpse into the feeble demented mind that is mine um, you know maybe these characters will give you some sort of idea what my childhood was like but to make it even worse check this out I don't know how many would recognize this I don't know if I can focus this is Freddy the Flute from the 70's TV series um, HR Puffin Stuff you sure are a lucky fella no teachers to yell at you. No kids to make fun of the way you talk. And luckiest of all, you can't feel lonesome. Well, I won't be needing you any longer now that I'm kicked out of the band. Did you ever speak to one before? No. So there. Um. <laughs> Sorry, it cracks me up. I stumbled on this. I think it was Thingiverse. I'll put the link below where I found it. I think it was Thingiverse. But I stumbled on this completely by accident. And I nearly fell off my chair. It made me laugh so much. Um, I had to go out and... Uh, I had to go get go out and print it. Um, it comes in three parts. This top piece from here uh, to the tip, which is the uh, the mouthpiece, then from here to here, where my thumb is, is the main body of the print, and then this piece right here that I'm rubbing out, <laughs> rubbing out, is the third piece. Um, <laughs> the gems were uh, gathered from Hobby Lobby uh, just some cheap costume jewelry it was like $1.79 for a packet of them um, but he was painted in Aztec gold and uh, some detailing done and everything but that is, that's a, but just a really quick simple build but my god was this fun he to, to build and the memories of that warped, warped show is is uh, really sent me down a path of, of other warped shows. But yeah, um, HR Puffin Stuff. This was the flute belonged to Jimmy. And uh, Witchy Pooh was always after the flute. She needed the flute for whatever reason. But this is it. <laughs> I'll tell you. Those shows in the 70s were demented by no stretch of the imagination. Holy cow. 
But anyway, that's it for now. Up next, Hagatha. I hope you'll stick around on our groovy, whacked out uh, road that we're on right now. And uh, eventually we'll get back to some other bills. But this is where I am right now. <laughs> Stuck in this weird little place. So until next time, guys, be strong. Easy now. Oh, that's better. Terrific. And you were wrong about flutes. We can be lonesome too. Will you be my friend? Will I? Oh boy. By the way, do you have a name? Of course. It's Freddy. Freddy Flute. That's a knockout. Then what are we waiting for? Pow? Let's go have some fun. You bet. <laughs>